All right, guys. I didn't make these pictures. These are established pictures. The Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky had private talks with the Pope Francis at the Vatican on Saturday, later saying he sought support for his peace plan from the pontiff, who in the past has offered to help end full-scale war launched by Russia a year ago. Okay. So, we don't see the Freemason hand sign here, the, the thumb on the knuckle. What we do see is the, hand, the Masonic hand sign over the heart that he's doing right now. I don't, uh, I didn't look at this close. Let's see. Oh, we've got the Mary figure triangle on top of a pillar with beams of light coming out of her head. And there is no such thing as a halo inside the Bible. That halo comes from... Babylon, that is Semiramis, right there, being worshipped, Semiramis. Hold on one second. So if you look at the top video, the one that says Randy Clark M13 hand sign, that's the exact same thing. Hey guys, this. let's wing this thing. That's the exact same hand sign, right there. Right there. See how he's got the two middle fingers together? Kind of looks like an E. Kind of looks like a number three. Kind of looks like a number 13 for the Templars. Same thing. These Masons have a plan to take over the world. Okay. Watch how, after he puts his hand on his chest, he specifically moves his ring finger closer to his middle finger to be able to make that sign. So the first thumbnail that had him doing that hand sign was from ABC News. The second one, the second thing down uh, is it Euro News Live. Let's see how many more of these. Um, okay, so Global News and for the Global News Network... They use a chevron as their logo, which means 33rd degree masons. And they are also global news. Remember, the globe is on top of the um, pillar inside the Masonic Lodge. And it has to do with Kabbalah. It has nothing to do with the Bible. So, chevron there. Vladimir's lip. See the global news? See the chevron as their logo? Okay, now that same hand sign is city news. Um, I don't know why he was doing it on that one. By the way, the yellow fringe on that flag like that because do you recognize that was uh, was it a 
Do you guys see the yellow fringe around those flags? That means that they're all under maritime law the same as we are under maritime law, which means that we are under the law of the sea, and beast number one is the beast of the sea. Who was in charge of the ocean for the last, what, 2,000 years? That would be the Templars, who were running around with that red cross and that Jolly Roger cross, uh, skull and crossbones. They've been running the sea for the last 2,000 years. So this is beast number one, the Pope. When beast number two is going to be, I believe, St. Germain, because he's the head of Freemasonry and the New Age movement. And that's who Bethel is teaching. Okay, so I was just scrolling down, and look at the, th the placement of the... Th wait, wait, wait. Do you see the placement of the Pope's thumb on the Queen's knuckles? Do you recognize that hand sign yet? It means they're at least both third degree. And that's, that's meaning that they're fellow craft. Notice how the president's already sitting down and the Pope's still standing up. Yes, I understand he's hurt, but the Pope's still standing up. And the president didn't know if he was be supposed to sit down before the Pope or not. So right here, the Pope is bringing in another man. I can't tell on that handshake if his thumb is on the knuckle or not. I'm just going to let it run. So, so we've already seen where Chris Valentin meets the Pope. Cultural catalysts with Chris Valentin. CC inside logos inside this group is a number 33. ABC, 1, 2, 3. CC means 33rd degree Mason. And see how they've got chevrons? has their logos, even though, I mean, look, right over the front of Chris's forehead and right over, right underneath that other guy's hands, uh, Rich Summit. So under Rich's hand is another chevron. And then they've got shadows of chevrons. Chevron, uh, and look, right behind Chris, there's a globe earth. They do this all the time. So... I'm Peter Davidson. Because uh, man, 11 a.m., I like to keep it toned down and simple, just like. Taco See how we've breakfast. got the globe up on the stage for Kenneth or for uh, um, Joel Osteen, smiling Joe. So smiling Joel Osteen, even though that is not that is Paul Washer up on the stage, but he still has the globe Earth. It's common inside, uh, and look, the globe Earth is your focus it is a mason's focus also so yes i understand that walter is a jehovah's witness more not mormon seventh day adventist whatever it is that he thinks that jesus is metatron or as a uh, michael the archangel so yeah i understand that but walter is still a professor and he is teaching things that are not inside scripture that we want to be able to see so that we can find the bad guys. So we're going to listen to Walter for a minute. The secret behind secret societies. Obviously, the secret behind secret societies is a secret that people don't want to spread abroad. Revelation 17, 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colors, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having the golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. There's only one church in the whole world that uses a woman with a cup. And that is the Roman church. And uh, here is City, Citta del Vaticano, using the woman with the golden cup, and she is called Fides. 
chicken on what are all you doing, their Al? documents. Fides. Now, well, let's go to a Masonic source, a very good Masonic source, written by Albert G. Mackey, the Manual of the Lodge. Albert Mackey was a 33 degree Freemason. It'll become clear as we go through the lectures what this means. And he says, the right hand has in all ages been deemed an emblem of fidelity, and our ancient brethren worship deity under the name of fides or fidelity, which was sometimes represented by two right hands joined and sometimes by two human figures holding each other by the right hand. Numa was the first who erected the altar to fides, under which the name the goddess of oaths and honesty was worshipped. So it means honesty and fidelity, but it is also an image of a female deity. Now, Revelation 17 verse 5 calls this institution the mother of prostitutes. In Revelation 18 verse 7, she says, I sit as queen, I am not a widow, and I will never mourn. So she might have lost some children during the Reformation, but she's going to get them back. I am, and there is none beside me. I will never be a widow or suffer loss of children. She's going to control the world in a spiritual sense. That's what this power says. Now, it's interesting that the Vatican has just recently, September 5, 2000, issued this encyclical, Dominus I Jesus, where she says, other churches are no sisters of ours, the Vatican insists. It must always be clear that the one holy Catholic and apostolic universal church is not the sister, but the mother of all the churches. Cardinal Ratzinger said that. He's the head of the Inquisition. They don't call themselves the Inquisition anymore. They call themselves the Congregation for Doctrine and Faith. But it's the same thing. It's even in the same building. Now, she's not the mother. She is not the sister, but the mother of all the churches. That means all the other churches are subject to her, right or wrong. That's what she says. Now, in Revelation 13, verse 1 and 2, speaking about the same power, it says, And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, that's a very, wow, statement. The dragon gave him the power? In other words, this power comes from another source. Now, doesn't Catholicism preach Christianity? Yes, it does. Doesn't it preach Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world? Yes, it does. But it also preaches mediation through other mechanisms and through the church. Now, it is interesting that in secret societies, there are always two doctrines, one for the initiated and one for the goyim, the uninitiated. And the Knights Templars had two doctrines. The one was the inside esoteric occult doctrine, and the other one was the exoteric, the one to the... And because Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton are Templars, their esoteric doctrine is the Kabbalah. That's what they're teaching inside the school. Knowingly or unknowingly, the students are learning to practice the religion of the fallen angels. Esoteric. Outside. And that was Catholicism. So the masses received a religion which the insiders turned on its head. Amongst occult insiders, Lucifer is the true son of God. Jesus is a second son who was defeated by the first one who had been thrown out. So Lucifer is the true luminary, the victor in the battle, and will be the one who will be worshipped at the end of time. That is occult doctrine. That's always been the doctrine of the Kabbalah, the Kabbalist doctrine, and it has been the doctrine of Gnosticism. But of course... It's not what the Bible teaches, but then Catholicism doesn't teach what the Bible teaches either. Revelation 17, verses 12 to 14, talks about ten horns you saw, ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. And they will make war against the Lamb. 
but the Lamb will overcome them because he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Now we're going to deal with the whole chapter of Revelation 17 at a later stage. But the kings of the world, here represented by these ten, will give their power to the system, just like in the Middle Ages, and enforce the doctrines on an entire world. Very interesting. This will be this beast from the bottomless pit. Now, Gary H. Carr, in his work on route to global occupation, puts it this way. He says there were the ancient mystery religions, which come from Babylon, and uh, they were pantheistic, of course, which means God is in nature, God is in everything, which in, in effect makes us God then too. This was... Little G gods, that's part of our thing that we're bringing up against Bethel and Kenneth and everybody else that this is the little G gods theory. This is because we were made by God, therefore we are God. Doesn't work, but that's what they're teaching. Inculcated in Kabbalism was taken over in the Christian era in what is called Gnosticism. And the Knights Templars were the inner secret core that had the ancient knowledge of the mystics. Okay, so we're going to stop with the Catholic stuff. If you guys want to go back and watch him, I will put Walter's link inside the description. But Threefold Flame is Masonic. The Kundalini and the graduation from PSSM is Templar. They are using hypnotism, Bobby Connors, dualism, Lord of the Rings, Zoroastrianism inside Alabaster Prayer House. We know that Todd White grew up in a Masonic group home. We know that the arsonist in Reading has lots of stuff about the Shekinah, and Shekinah is another name for Lucifer. Um... Let's keep going down here. We know that Jonathan Rumi is a Knights Templar. He's verified that. We know that Sean Foyt is Knights Templar. We know that he is going after the blessings when he's grave soaking of Count Zinzendorf. And Count Zinzendorf started the... Um, uh, oh, I forgot what that name... Mustard Seed Freemasonry. Um, let's see. We know about the pyramid in the octagon. We know Jonathan Kahn's hand sign from Freemasonry. This is the dragon. That guy right there is the head of Freemasonry, the very top guy of Freemasonry. If you want to understand who he is, you have to go over here. Watch Who that. is St. Germain, and why is he important? What else says that these guys are Masons? All their Mason logos. Masons are into mind control. I've got a bunch of books that I've been through already. Freemason hand sign on Prophet Lovey, Lovey's um, pulpit that he was at. Freemason hand signs from William Branham and Bill Johnson. John Calvin exposed for his Freemason stuff. All the occult symbolism that you need to be looking for to be able to find these guys but right here at the top of the screen Bethel Baphomet worship Brian Johnson has his own religious organization at his house he got three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars given to his nonprofit religious organization that's inside his house called Goat Lord Farms and Goat Lord is a Baphomet that is worshipped by the Templars. Every bit of what Bethel is doing is Freemasonic, and the Templars are a 32nd degree Freemason. These guys, all the Alabaster Prayer House being on ley lines, that's Masonic. It, it's th this whole thing, every single bit of it. Let's see. Bethel Church New Age and Mysticism. That's an actual recording of a girl teaching in the name of Bethel and teaching New Age teachings. New Age teachings come from the Ascended Masters. It is all the stuff that came out of Babylon. You just got to get... People have to wrap their heads around this. In Acts 19.19, 19, 
the church was already practicing the Kabbalah. They were already using Kabbalistic methods for casting out demons out of people. When you're seeing all these demon slayers, there is no such thing as a deliverance ministry. If you want to get delivered, have somebody pray over you one time and walk away. That should be the end of it. But getting dwelt with the Holy Spirit, follow Yeshua HaMashiach. Get out of this, this Babylonian cult. Even right here, the speaking in tongues, error and correction, they're speaking, the, the tongues they're speaking comes from the cult of Pythia. The cult of Python, be as wise as the serpent and as gentle as the dove. We know these people are practicing everything in scripture that says it's an abomination. This group is trying to trick the students into participating in those events. So, when you see that hand sign, don't fall for it. This is a Masonic puppet show. I mean, do you not catch, you guys aren't catching on that the Pope is wearing a yarmulke, right? He is a Kabbalist. He is practicing Kabbalah also. All right, guys. Have a good one.